something? God's good. Yeah. And God wants you blessed. Jesus came to redeem us from the curse. Amen? Amen. Poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. Well, we teach all the time on how to get redeemed from spiritual death and get saved. Right. Amen? Sickness, we're always having healing rallies and stuff. Forth. But poverty is a thing that, it's a harder subject to teach in that there are so many uh, nuances of misinterpretations or misuses that sometimes you get caught up with spending a lot of time on the misuses and, and, and those things instead of just being able to just go in and say, you know, God wants you to prosper. And I just, you know, just, you know I wish we didn't have all the other stuff in there, but we've kind of covered all that, I think. Past month, we've kind of hit about every wacko, you know, whacked out, you know, bless me and only me thing. So we're going to talk about God wants you to be blessed. Amen? Amen? God wants you to be blessed. God doesn't want you poor. God doesn't want you living paycheck to paycheck. God didn't design you to barely get along. God designed you to prosper. Amen? Hallelujah. Genesis 39, 1 through verse 3 says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, the officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard of the Egyptian, brought him out of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian, and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made him, made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Now, understand this, he's a slave. Even as a slave, he was prospering. He's kind of like the golden goose, the, 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 the goose that laid the golden egg. You know, I mean, this, this, this master figures out real quick, Joseph prospers. See, you can prosper no matter what. See, we, we got this high mindset that you've got to be, you know, self-employed at the top of something. I'll tell you what, nothing wrong with self-employed if, you're, if, you're, if you could do that. Some people just can't do it. You're not quite, you just don't need to be self-employed. Right. Why? You'd be home in bed at 6 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> and get up and go back at 8. You know? You need to, some people need that. Just, they're just make, their makeup is they need discipline. They, they know, and so, well, you know, God can prosper you at McDonald's. Right. God can prosper your business. You know, God wants to prosper your business. God wants to prosper you at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. He wants to make you the head, not the tail. Now, Janice didn't, Janice didn't hear, but you know, Janice ended up going from working to managing. Mm -hmm. See, there's more money in managing than there is in working. Yeah. Burger flipper don't make, it's, isn't that kind of funny how life is? The guy who does all the hard work gets paid about 20th of what the guy who just sits up at the top and talks about how to work gets. <laughs> Amen. You know, you go, you, go into, you go into education and all the academians at the top, all the presidents and the vice presidents, who sit around and come up with ways to make it harder for the teachers to teach, make all the money. It's just the way it is. You know, of course, they're all, and most of those guys are resume padding in order to get a bigger job at a bigger university or a bigger school, and so they make it tough on everybody else. They, it's kind of like what that guy from GE did that time. He went in and started taking on these companies and making them profitable, and how he made them profitable is he stole all the... Uh, the retirements and pensions of all the people that work for him. Wow. He did away with their pensions. Didn't, like, when he took over GE, he did away with $20 million in pensions. People lost their pensions. But the company became profitable and all the stockholders were happy. Wow. Well, uh, I don't want him around. No. God can prosper you no matter what you're doing. Amen? So if you're working, if you're a laborer, God can prosper you. If you own your own business, God can prosper you. As a matter of fact, let me change that. If you're, if you're a laborer, where you work for someone else, God wants to prosper you. If you own your own company, God wants to prosper you. If you're retired, God wants to prosper you. You can, retire, you can prosper in retirement. God can make money flow to you in unusual ways. Are you here? You're going home. All right. And so Joseph, Joseph was a prosperous man even though he was a slave. Genesis 39, 23. And the keeper of the prison looked not at... Any, to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Joseph. Man, I'll tell you, the guy was over him, just left him alone. Said, you know, look, if I leave him alone, he's going to prosper. Right. You can work for companies and God will bless the company just to get you more money. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Brother Bill had that happen a few years ago. He was working somewhere and uh, they weren't going to get any raises or any bit bonuses or something. And all of a sudden, they, had, they, they came out and get, the whole company got this because Brother Bill was believing God to get a certain amount of money. He got his money. Now, God had to bless the whole company to get it to him, but who cares? I said, who cares? Huh? He can afford it. He can afford it, that's right. Didn't God tell Abraham in his covenant promise to him that in thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed? 
See, you should cause those around you to get blessed just because you're there. Amen. Your presence of you being blessed should get off on it. And that's a biblical principle. Think about Abraham and Lot. Lot was not a prosperous guy until he got hanging out with Abe. Amen. Now he got to hanging around Abraham and got in on, just getting in on the overflow of those that are blessed will bless you. I mean, that's a spiritual principle. Now, you, know, you, get, you get these uh, young ministers a lot of times who think that they're really some hot stuff or whatever, and it, they're just kind of working in a ministry, you know, like a lot of associates who want to go out and start their own churches and you know, split churches because they're such a great preacher. And what they didn't realize, they were getting in on the blessing, and the overflow of the anointing of the pastor. Got out there on their own, found out something. You want all that hot. You know, there's a lot of people in Tulsa. Listen, you can go to Tulsa, hang up a sign somewhere, and people come to your church. And then tell you how great you are. Cause it, and, and then you talk to them, and they've been to every other charismatic church in town. Three times. Remember here this, with this one, this one, and they made the circle back around because they, they keep running. You no, know, after a while, they keep running out of places to go, so they just keep recircling the, the block. Why don't you go to Timbuktu? Somewhere out there where, where you know, they pipe sunshine in. <laughs> Find out if you're walking in your own anointing or if you're walking in the black overflow. Now, in, in prosperity, see that, that, listen, we've got to be, be careful about this. Make sure we're doing the right things. We want to prosper. But don't think because, you know, if you get up under somebody else's anointing or somebody else's blessing, you're going to run up and do your own thing. Right. Maybe it's right for you to stay where you are and be a blessing. And let God promote you and bless you where you are. Yeah. And you be a blessing there and that God blesses you while you're there. Yeah. Promotion that comes from God will come from God and you won't have to make it happen. Yeah. Amen. And Joseph didn't. You know, uh, here we go again. Come on, Dropbox, stop that mess. All right. I'm, I'm losing my, my whole sermon here. Oh, oh that's because I'm over here on this. Yes, uh, you know what it was? It was, it, I was looking at the one that was under, um, You're just not used to looking at your notes. <laughs> <laughs> I would love you for it. <laughs> well, we had a good service. I'll see y'all on Sunday. That was a really good explanation, but that's not the reason. What it was, I had gotten back over on the Wi-Fi version and not on the one that had been saved to my iPad, so I kept dropping the, the, uh, the link, and uh, it, it was searching. So now that I'm on the favorites, it's saved to my, on the one that's saved on my thing, I will get to the notes that I'm not going to stay with. <laughs> so we have, <laughs> that was good, Greg, that was really good. <laughs> you used to mess me up now, how am I get back? <clears throat> if, if we learn... To prosper where we are. Mm -hmm. And don't, listen, listen, people will come to you. They'll come all the time. This is God's way to get rich. Already doing it. I'm bringing the tithe and offering into the storehouse. I'm being led by the Spirit of God. I don't need your newest, slickest, coolest plan that's going to make you rich before I get anything. Now, a number of years ago, there, you know, and, and a lot of Raymond people got involved in this, but there was this thing going around where they were selling, they were selling telephone, some kind of telephone card. And, and, and I had somebody come to me and say, oh, God, this is God's plan to make you rich. I went home and looked it up. The pyramid was that only 11% made money. Yeah. 11%. Not a lot. Not a then what does that mean? 89% what? Nothing. Zip over. Zip over. Does God have a plan where 89% of people lose money? No. The two guys that ran it went to jail. <laughs> Ended up going to jail. The two top guys who started it. See, watch out for people. What'd you say? And started the prison ministry. See, God got, God got him to do that. Come so he could get him in jail so he could minister to the prisoners. You got people who believe that. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Now, listen, listen. Let's prosper because we're following the way God said do things. Joseph prospered because he was, he, he was upright before the Lord. He did what the Lord told him to do. He was blessed of God because he, he followed after the, God with a good heart. Amen.
And if we'll do the thing God tells us to do, we'll prosper. Amen. So number one, don't forget to tithe. Two, don't forget to give offerings to your local church. There's always people out there clamoring for the money. They're, they get on television. They make themselves look great. They write books. Da, 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 da. You know, I, listen, the local church is God's vision because he wants to reach people where they are. God can't send, listen, thank God for the role Christian television has had in reaching people. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have any problem with that. I think the church should have support that which is doing that work that we can't do, which is evangelistic in places we can't get to. But when it becomes a purporter of doctrine, and we're just teaching the church, when it's a church substitute, it's lost its role. Christian television should be, should be an enhancement to the local church and not a detraction from. Okay? So, now, so God wants us to prosper. God wants us to you know, be like Joseph where we prosper. Now, look at Deuteronomy 29.9. God tells us one thing that will help us prosper. Deuteronomy 29.9. Keep, therefore, the words of this covenant and do them that ye may prosper in all that you do. Being a keeper and or doer of the word will prosper you. Look over in uh, Joshua chapter 1. We've quoted this a billion times of the church. And a lot of times we, we, we major on certain aspects of it and people jump off on certain aspects of it and miss the, the, uh, the main import of it. Now, we love the part, you know, uh, Joshua 1 7, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou may observe to do according to the law, the law that my Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Now let me say this. 99% of the time, the majority of the emphasis is on that you'll prosper. And we get caught up where we're going to prosper. And we're going to prosper. And we're going to prosper. But understand this. The key principle here is if you, if you meditate in the word and observe to do it, prosperity will come. So the emphasis should be on meditating in the word and being a doer of it and observing to do it. Why? Because that by default will cause prosperity to come. Instead of trying to figure out how to make the prosperity to come. Forget about that. that that's a result of what the emphasis is, being a doer, meditating in and being a doer and observer of the word. Now listen, not just a doer and an observer of prosperity scriptures. This book of the law, the whole thing. Everybody say amen. amen. Or, oh me. Or, can I get at least one, help me Jesus. Lord, help me. Did I get one of those? No, I ain't going to get one of those. All right. Man, we need Gabriel. Oh, Gabriel used to come in here. He got Preach, Pastor! Yeah, it was, anyway, most of y'all don't know Gabriel. Who knew Gabriel? All right, okay, a few of you. All right. Hallelujah. He went out to ORU and never came back. Hallelujah. I can't, well, praise the Lord. <clears throat> listen, listen to what he says, verse 7. Be strong and courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law that Moses commanded you. Don't turn to the right and left that you may prosper with us whoever thou goest. In other words, before you ever get to the prospering, you're doing. Before you get to the point where you're going to prosper wherever you go, you're not turning to the right hand or the left hand for the commandments of God. You're obeying God. See, God blesses people who honor him and let me say something. If you don't honor his word, you don't honor him. That went over big. If you don't honor God's word, you don't honor him. I'm going to say it one more time until I get at least a holy grunt. If you don't honor his word, you don't honor him. Because his word is an expression of himself. His word represents his character, his nature. And when God says, listen, God says be holy as I, even as I am holy. You got lunatics running around thinking they can live unholy and God's going to bless them anyway. 
Because they're under grace. No, 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 no. See, if we'll learn to follow the principles of the Word of God and do what God said, not Bozo said, God said. Bozo doesn't know his head from a hole in the ground. Hello. You know, there, there's people who, who are always self-purporting their selves. And, and I knew someone, and, and, and um, they were always seeing angels. I mean, there's my angel. There's my angel. I mean, about every day or every other day, they saw an angel. I never saw one, so I felt really stupid. Unspiritual. Because, I mean, there's this angel. Again. For the 25th time in 23 days. You know? Got out of Bible school, and they all went off and had their own church within six weeks. Got married and had their own church. Two years, they blew it up. Because they got into false doctrine. Moved back to our hometown. Got in there, got another church, blew it up. Hello? See? And, I, and of course, here, here I am on the other side of this thing thinking, man, I'm not doing anything for God because, you know, uh, I mean, he's got his own church and he's got, a, he's got his wife, he's got his own church. He just, he just pastors the church and he blows it up. I'm just cooking chicken and walking dogs for the pastor. <laughs> but you know something, folks? I'm, 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 I'm not talking about this, this principle. But when we learn to follow the principles of God and follow the, the Bible says don't lay hands on a novice. Don't separate a novice. Right. Mm -hmm. That's not talking about, you know, not hitting anybody. It's talking about right. not separating people to the ministry that are novices. They have no, they have no spiritual depth. It's one thing to be, you know, it's, it's two different things. Let me say this one. It's a different thing to separate somebody and have them as an associate or as a, as a, as a, as associate or a minister that's un, overseen by a senior pastor or something. It's nothing to set them out there by themselves. You can, you can take somebody and train them and have them working and you've got oversight. When they're out there by themselves, you know, they're, they're full of arrogance, self-promoting. I'll tell you something. You know what? A man's gift to make room for. You don't have to promote yourself. God will promote you. You don't have to prosper yourself. God will prosper you. If you follow his word. Now, prosper, let, let me say something. Prosperity entails more than financial gain. See, we, we limit it to that because we need money so much. It's our barter system. I get that. But you know, it's prosperity for your children to serve the Lord. It's prosperity to have peace in your home. Yeah. It's prosperity to have your marriage good. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying you don't get to have the financial end of it, but let's not limit it to solely financial things. And when we don't see big checks in the mail, God didn't do it. Listen, you got peace. You, you didn't have a wreck that you would have had. You're tither. You got protected from being in this accident. But you ain't going to find out about until you get to heaven and watch the big screen. There'll, there'll be things you'll find out in heaven that were part of your prosperity package that you didn't know about on this side. Because you can't know about an accident that didn't happen. The time you stumbled, because you were tired that the angels bore you up, lest you dashed your foot against stone. Had you, had you not been doing, obeying God and walking in His commandments and His covenant, you would have broke something and spent hundreds of dollars, may have been out of work, and lost money. Right. Y'all hear you've gone home. Amen. Prosperity entails more. It's in, financial is included in it, and it's a big part of it. But there's other realms that we've got to start allowing uh, our thinking to change and understand God's doing things in other realms other than just financial and not lose faith and not lose heart because you haven't seen a big check show up. Quite frankly, can I be real honest with you? We shouldn't be here as a church right now. The financial strain that we've been through in the past three to four years has been demonic. We shouldn't even be here. I shouldn't still be in my home. I don't know how we are, but we are. I just, you know, how, how enough came in when, when we needed enough to come in to keep us from being... But it has. Mm -hmm. 
Now, there's, there's no, on paper, you can think, dear Jesus. But see, we're tithers and givers. God blesses us. God keeps us. God prospers us in ways, you know, things happen. Listen, we got, we got, so we, we, we had a blessing come in recently. We got caught up, uh, way caught up on our, our lease. They never even said anything about us being three months behind. Most of the time, they're, they're writing you a letter telling you it's about time to leave. You got X number of days to get caught up or get out. And then, oh, we're going to come lock the doors and take all your stuff and sell it to pay back with you. You know, well, that, that would be bad. They didn't, say, they didn't say anything. I'm like, so I sent in, you know, uh, sent in stuff to the guy and sent him an email and said, hey, look, we, we, got, we got this coming in. He said, sounds like God provided because he's a Christian. He's a good guy, you know. Yeah, he did. Hallelujah. Amen. Our, our, our leasing manager, he's a good guy. He's, he loves the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, sounds like God provided. Yes, he did. Prosperity is, but see, it's just more than money. And if you'll learn that we're going to observe to, you know, what did he say here? That you may observe to do according to the, all the law, that you may prosper. Then next verse, keep the book of law in your mouth, meditating it there, there, there in day and night. Excuse me. That you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. Notice before you ever get, for then thou shalt make that way prosperous. It's all about meditating, observing, and doing. And when you meditate, observe, and do, what happens? Because of meditating, observing, and doing, prosperity follows. You're not even pursuing prosperity. Prosperity is the result of meditating, observing, and doing. It happens because of it. I'm tithing and giving. Yeah, but are you living like you're supposed to live? Are you treating your wife right? Lord, help me, Jesus. <laughs> anyway, Chris Christopherson. <laughs> Remember that song? I've wasted it so hell. Anyway, <laughs> help me, Jesus. My soul's in your hand. Anyway, not the greatest singer in the world. I probably could do a remake, a cover of that song and be sound just as good as he did. Hallelujah. You ever heard that? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Gina's too young. What happens when you marry babies? I can't help it. <laughs> Should be sitting on the front row. I'm just, I, get, I get honorary every once in a while. <laughs> Hallelujah. Cradle robber. Hallelujah. Amen. Where was I before I started singing Chris's song? Observe. When we understand that obedience to, so you're treating your wife right. You're obedience to the Word of God, observing the Word of God, meditating in the Word of God. That prosperity becomes a result of doing mm -hmm. a lifestyle. Then prosperity becomes part of the, of the lifestyle. And we're not even, even having to... <clears throat> we got so many people going to prosperity meetings around the country with, with gimmicks of giving up, making the preacher rich. You know, you got to make the preacher rich. And, and listen, I, I know you got to yeah, counterbalance, Lord, keep them poor, we'll keep them humble. Or you, Lord, you keep them humble, we'll keep them poor mindset. That's, not, that's unbiblical. Right. We can get back to, let's be Christians who love God, who do the Word, who meditate in the Word. And then out of that, God wants to bless you. Amen? But see, we got a lot of people thinking that if they'll go put money in a preacher's pocket or throw it on the, on the stage while he's preaching, that they're going to get all this money and they can just still go home and slap their wife around. So you can't beat your wife and God going to bless you. Women, you can't pull a knife on your husband while he's asleep and put it at his throat and God going to bless you. Some houses don't have gun safes, they got knife safes. All right, baby, you can have it out while you cook. And it goes back in. <laughs> so that's what happens in the Curry's house, but I just heard anyway. I'm just messing now. I am feisty tonight. I'm honorary. You can't come in and tithe and give offerings and, 
and give pastor a Pentecostal handshake on the way out the front door and cuss your kids out in the back seat when you get the car because they did something. And expect the blessing to come on your life. See, God's word has already declared if we would meditate in the word day and night and observe to do according to all that's written therein, we would make our way prosperous. So a lot of times people aren't prospering not because they're not tithing they're not giving, because they're not getting some other areas of their life straightened out. You can't come in here and tithe and prosper and walk out and talk about how you can't stand the pastor. And expect God to bless you. Or tell the pastor what he's going to do with the money. And expect God to bless you. Tried to share my heart one time with somebody. Said, well, I ain't, I've already told you I ain't doing that. I'm just trying to share what God has in my heart. I'm the visionary. I'm the leader. God has something I was trying to share with them because they were talking about money and stuff. And I was sharing with them what we wanted to do. Well, I've already told you I ain't supporting that. And you think God's going, well, you, you, can, you can make certain things happen because you make, work them in the natural. Yeah. But it's not the blessing of the Lord. Uh-huh. See, we're to, see, follow me as I follow the Lord. So obey those with the rule over you. See, the pastor has a vision from God. And when he begins to express it, maybe in a, even in a private setting, if he's expressing the vision that God's giving him and the heart that he has about something, what gives you the right to slam it? And slam it to the ground. Uh-uh. And have your own vision, what you're going to do. See? You, and then you expect this to work for you. It don't work that way. I said it doesn't work that way. I wasn't going this way tonight. I, where, where did this come from? That honorary spirit. That's all. Yeah, God, God can be honorary, I guess. <laughs> you actually like it. So he says... The book of law shall not depart of your mouth, but shall meditate therein day and night. You may observe to do according to all that's written therein. So now let's add into our, 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 our giving paradigm, our tithing paradigm, which is biblically, we bring it to the storehouse and prove God. Let's add into that living holy. Let's speak words of affection to our spouse. Let's be kind one to another. Hello, you can't be, I know this, this, it's okay to joke around, I, listen, I don't mind joking around, I know the Bible talks about foolish jesting, foolish jesting is a kind of jesting that's hurtful, if you've got a relationship with somebody like Greg did tonight, you know, you're not on your notes, you know, maybe it's because you're not, a, you know, whatever, you know, everybody gets a kick out of that, that's no big deal, that's, that's not foolish, that's just messing around, all right? Foolish, Jesse, would be kind of good. Well, if you actually stay on your nose once in a while, we might learn something. And that gets you in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But let's add in serving one another. Let me say something. You, here, is, here is one of the biggest. I, I, I read the Gospel of Matthew today. Whole thing. And... Um, just, just decided I want to sit down and read the whole Gospel of Matthew. So I read the Gospel of Matthew. And, um, but Jesus said some interesting things in that Gospel. And um, I, have, I have scripture right in my head right then when I started to say that. And then, okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do good to them spitefully. Yeah, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Yeah, he, he, he said... Talked about, he was talking about the Pharisees and how they like to be seen and be heard. You know, and they, and they pray loud. They do all kinds of things. They do their alms in front of people so that they, everybody sees what they're doing. He said, but you, and I'm going to paraphrase a bunch of stuff he said here, okay? He, the essence of what he said was, but you're going to be different. You're going to go into your closet. You're going to pray. You're going to do your alms in secret. And when you do the things with the right heart and the right motives, your Father, which is in heaven, will openly bless and reward you for that. And that's a lot of paraphrasing, but you read, the, you read the middle of Matthew and that's what you get out of it. It's not about making you look great or doing things to be seen. 
We're, we're to be, we're, we, we got to learn that behind the scenes actually does get blessed. Mm-hmm. Now, if you promote yourself, you got your reward. Everybody saw you. Amen. Look what I did. Hello. Amen. Amen. Isn't that right? I mean, it's, 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 it's just a good, it's a good gospel. All of them are good. So I just decided to read that one today. And um, all the stuff that Jesus said about the, along those lines, the Pharisees and the, you know, and, 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 the, and the people who want to do things to be seen and noted and promote themselves. Did you know that the local church is the most important thing in the kingdom of God? Why? Because Greensboro, the people in Greensboro need pastors in Greensboro mm-hmm. that, that can meet their need where they are. Now, I don't know if you've seen this commercial from the, uh, at least that's not 666 six, six floating across there. <laughs> An 888 went across. <laughs> that's some kind of nursery thing, I think. I don't know whose it is, but. Or is it a need nursery worker? What is it, Jessica? Usher. Sorry, it's not it's, we need an usher. We need a warm body. Okay. Ding, 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 ding. Where was I going before we got interrupted with the ushering thing? Local church. Just saw this commercial from this, the, the, some local hospital group. But now you can see your doctor at home. How are they going to examine you? I'm just a sore throat. How are they going to examine your throat and do a throat culture at home? Please tell me. Unless you've got some fancy software and equipment that you hook up to your computer so you can do it yourself. And then they swipe it and it registers and sends it over to them. Well, in the same way, you can't have a, 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 a television pastor minister to your deeds. Ah, if there's no distance in the spirit. I'm going to say something. We can get real cute. There, there's a truth to that, but there's also a misapplication and a mistruth to that. Okay? Dad Hagen said this. Now, how many remember the, the Jim Baker deal, PTO? Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yeah. Remember he got, he got, he was in court, going to, he, was being, he was being tried. Well, about that time that he was in court and being tried, um, Dad Hagen came to Charlotte to Philip Jackson's church and did his first uh, minister's conference, like 1990. Dad was going to start holding minister's conferences. And teach because he wanted to share. So there was a lot of teaching out there that needed to be corrected. And the only way he could get out there and do it was he went out on the road and did it. Crazy teach about apostles and prophets. There were Alabamas from the Bible. And he, and he got there, and he got there the first night of the meeting, and he, he's, he's talking on all of a sudden. He says, well, you know, there are just some things you can't tell until you get, get in the area of something. Right. That's right. And he says, now, PTL, you have a Jim Baker... He said it won't be as bad as it sounds. Well, about three, about three months later, he got 45 years. And people were going, he missed it. He missed it. He said it wouldn't be as bad as it sounds. He said it wouldn't be as bad as it sounds. He didn't say it wouldn't be bad. He said it won't be as bad as it sounds. Now, about two years later, they reduced his sentence to five years. Now, all those people who went out and slammed Brother Hagin for being a false prophet because he said it won't be as bad as it sounds got, you know, chewed up by the Holy Ghost because it went from 45 to 5. That's not as bad as it sounds, is it? It was bad, but it ended up not being as bad as it sounds. But the point of that was, he said, you can't tell some things until you get in the area. See, it's hard, you know, I'll be honest with you, if, you're, if, you're, if I'm in, in uh, Tallinn, and, and I need to call and pray for you. Sometimes it's just better to have some, maybe somebody at the staff to do it because they're there. You know, your pastor can pray for you and God can speak to me. There's just some things about being around people. Yeah, yeah, 
that are important. Now, I don't know I got off on that. We're supposed to be talking about prosperity. We are talking about prosperity. Because if you'll observe to do, meditate, observe, and do, you'll, you'll prosper. Because notice, notice what he says here in verse 8. The last thing he says, and I'm going to close. I got long winded Sunday morning. Bless my heart. I hadn't preached an hour and a half in years. And did not realize I had done it. Did y'all realize it? Yeah, my backside did. <laughs> I had one preacher tell me there's a four-hour chairs. Because I'm, I'm going to tell you something. If you don't like me preaching an hour and a half in these seats, go get one of the old ones and bring it up here and sit in and let me do it an hour and a half again and see what you think. Yeah. You'll be going, Lord, I like the new chairs. But look here at what he says. After he says, meditate, observe, and do. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. The phrase, then thou shalt have good success in Hebrew, literally translated means deal wisely in the affairs of life. Now, don't you think that dealing wisely in the affairs of life will bring prosperity to you? Hello? See, people who don't deal wisely in the affairs of life buy things on a whim and then three months later realize they really don't need it and lose money on it. Sell it off and lose money. I really did. Now, I've got relatives who have bought stuff and bought stuff and bought them on whims and then turned around in one or two years and sold them and lose money on them because they, they didn't deal wisely in the affairs of life. They didn't wait. You don't have to have a new car every two years. Now, I've got a Jeep that I've had for 11 years. I only got 131,000 miles on it. You know, great vehicle. But why am I going to get rid of it? I mean, I've, gone, I've driven up in car lots just to get out and see what the kind of new cars I have. And they're out there clamping, they're drooling trying to get that from me. Because they know they can make a buttload of money off of it. It's a Jeep with an I-6, inline six in it. People love inline sixes. Because they're why? Because they'll run forever. You can't hardly kill that engine. You could take it out and shoot it and it'll run. They're just a great engine. They, and they don't make it anymore. Why? Because they don't make no repair on them. They stop making them because you lose money. Why manufacture something? You know, they, they, don't, they want to make money on you coming back in the shop. So they want to give you something that tears up. I like my inline six. You can't have it. But when you, when you just constantly doing stupid stuff with your finances... You, and you're not dealing wisely in the affairs of life. Now, what's the number one rule about any new technology? Thank you. Wait. At least until the second generation of it. Why? Because, I mean, they're, all they care about is getting the new technology on the market and selling it at maximum price. They'll deal with the fallout later. The new Xbox is going to be the perfect. Oh, the original one. Okay. Okay, Adam, I hear all the gamers. Xbox is trash. Go, Adam. He's, he's probably right. I, we don't have Xbox one. I don't, we, I don't know what version we have, but we have an Xbox. But I don't have any problems with it. But I didn't buy the first one. I didn't buy the first iPhone. I didn't get, listen, I got an iPhone 4 after the iPhone 4S had come out. I mean, I waited and waited and waited. I, did, I just didn't know if I was going to change it up, you know. And, and now the 5 is out and all that stuff, and I'm not sure if I want to change even though my, my contract's running out. I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to wait. I want them to have at least a couple runs at it. Windows, version 4 of it, whatever the version is, you know. And then you'll hate it. See, so if you deal wisely in the affairs of life, you won't waste money. And we, we did, I remember one time, we kind of did that. We, um, we bought a DVD recorder, a Sony DVD recorder. It was $699. But it was cool. This is years ago. It was cool. You could, I mean, you could set it up, you could record and burn it to a DVD so, you know, whatever was coming out, you were recording on DVD, you weren't having to use the VHSs, and it was sloppy, you know, all that kind of stuff. 
within the first year, the hard drive tore up. The hard drive tore up. Not the hard drive, the CD drive tore up. Like, like right, at, right at one year, like 13 days from being a year, so it's still in the warranty. Had to fight all the way up Sony's chain. Then they fit repair it. Six months later, that one tears up. It's in my closet as a piece of junk re reminder <laughs> that we need to deal wisely in the affairs of life. Hello? You don't buy version one. But see, when, you, when, you, when you're walking with God and listening to heaven, you, 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 he overrides dumb. He overrides stupid. If you'll listen. And see, when you're meditating in the Word and observing and doing and you're, you're in tune with God, you'll say, no, you really shouldn't buy that right now. All right, Lord. And then you find out later on, they've had nothing but trouble with that. Amen? Hallelujah. So, that is part of prosperity, is dealing wisely. That, does God speak to you and say, go do such and such? Or you have an impression to go do something, and you go buy something, and when you get in there, you find out you just saved a bunch of money? Because you need to buy certain things, but you need just strong... I've had that happen several times in the past couple months. I've been riding down the road and, and just had this real strong urge to go, go here and buy this at this store today. Right. Food or something. And you go in and you find that man, and then you realize, I just saved a truckload of money. And it was stuff I needed, and I, was just, I wasn't on my way to do that, but I had the urge to go do it. Mm -hmm. Just had the urge. Ever get the urge yeah. to just go do? Amen. Hallelujah. You, you will deal wisely in the affairs of life. Amen. All right.